Remember how I told you that Cyanogen Inc. and Micromax were competing with Android One? Well, as per some reports, Google did try to buy Cyanogen Inc. and that is an article published by the information which mentions that in a meeting with the shareholders of Cyanogen Inc. Kurt mentioned that Sundar Pichai yes Sundar Pichai who was head of Chrome at that time did meet with them and expressed interest in acquiring the firm but Cyanogen Inc. denied the offer because they wanted to grow and this is what brings us to the next topic called poking the bear so Kurt went to the information's next phase of Android conference in San Francisco on 23rd January 2015. How did he introduce himself? He said, I am the CEO of Cyanogen. We are attempting to take Android away from Google. And then a few months later, Cyanogen Inc. raised $80 million in investment from Twitter, Qualcomm, Telefonica, and Rupert Murdoch. I mean, those were not the only investors, but they were some of the investors. Investments worth $80 million. Then on 23rd March, 2015, Forbes invited Kurt and Steve to a meeting. This is how the article starts. Kurt was late and there was no apology. And then in the same interview, Kurt says, we are putting a bullet through Google's head. My personal opinion, I think the fact that Google was interested in buying Cyanogen Inc. made him believe that, you know, he was owning something. He was the CEO of something super big, which Google was afraid of. So he was taking all these shots at Google. Now, he was, of course, being aggressive and someone from the investment team or one of the investors did give him a piece of advice which you can see on your screen right now but let me just say i wish he didn't poke the bear too many times and so loudly now jumping over to 2016 this is like a year after the partnership with microsoft almost a year after those putting a bullet through the head of Google comments on 22nd July 2016 layoffs at Cyanogen Inc started they had reportedly laid off 30 out of the 136 people offices in Lipson and India were shut down and there were rumors suggesting that Cyanogen Inc is moving away from OS to concentrate on apps but Kurt quickly denied this but then again, he also did not know what was going on behind the scenes either because there was a new strategy under the operating officer Lior Tal who had joined Cyanogen Inc. in June 2016 from Facebook and yes, they were moving away from OS. Strange, right? They were moving away from the thing they do the best. Cyanogen Mod, Cyanogen Inc, Cyanogen OS formed because they wanted to make Android better. And they were moving away from that. Strange, strange, strange. Now, another controversy on 17th August 2016. The information published a report claiming that Cyanogen Inc never had the 50 million users they had claimed. They had some internal document examined and the number was close to 25 million. So they had like exaggerated the amount by 25 million. Next up on 10th October 2016, within a few months of joining Cyanogen Inc, Lior Tal became the new CEO. Yep, Kurt, no, he didn't leave the company. He would stay on as the executive chairman of the board. And of course, the new Cyanogen Inc. would move towards modularity, which means Cyanogen OS was dead. And of course, the outgoing CEO, Kurt, had to 
put out an official statement as well which you can again read on your screen right now but the most interesting part i found from this one was the fact that he was ready for the bullet through the head jokes from the android blogs however that was not it on 28th november 2016 there were rumors of more layoffs at Sinogen inc and there were also reports that steve kondik's job was in danger note steve aka Sinogen, finally decided to speak up in a blog post on google plus talked about having his differences with kurt and how it was a shitty place to work in and of course he also had self realization which we do need to appreciate now the blog post you can see on the screen right now but the important part here is steve was already thinking about what's next for cm or Sinogen mod because it does take a lot of money to keep the servers for the nightly builds remember they support a bunch of devices for the enthusiasts i'm talking about Sinogen mod here not Sinogen os so that was also under the umbrella of Sinogen inc and they do say that you know they have about two months to gtfo and then on 23rd december 2016 steve made a blog post about the death of Sinogen mod and they said as part of ongoing consolidation of Sinogen all services and Sinogen supported nightly builds will be discontinued no later than 31st December 2016 the open source project and source code will remain available for anyone who wants to build Sinogen mod personally so I think the source code was up on github and of course open source so again the beauty of open source can be seen over here now another important thing to note over here is that Sinogen inc was not being shut down but because Sinogen inc owned the Sinogen mod brand they were shutting down the support for nightly builds the servers the jarrets all those for Sinogen mod the open source rom which is when they took the important decision of forking it as lineage os yes that is when lineage os was born and once Sinogen mod open source was forked as lineage os it said the cat amongst the pigeons over at Sinogen inc that they decided to shut down Sinogen mod on 25th december 2016 six days earlier than steve had hoped for but it was expected from Sinogen inc and that's it eight years of hard work down the drain for some bad partnerships and bad decisions but the legacy of Sinogen mod still lives on and we better know it as lineage os now